Hey, a pleasant good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight at the Sports Fan News Channel. As always, since I forget to do this at the beginning in every other video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Usually I do it about 20 minutes in because I forget. Remember at the beginning this time. I'm Joe, joined by Mike for his uh, podcast debut tonight, and uh, he's going to do great. Uh, he has a bunch of great flyers knowledge, and we're going to get right into it with talking about our blunder of yesterday. Um, what was your big takeaway from that third period that's going to have to be an improvement in order to close out a game tomorrow against the Bees? Well, I listened to your video yesterday, and I think you hit the nail on the head as far as uh, you were saying how, like, the Coyotes, they, they like to, um, if they have a lead, just protect it. They don't focus on too much offense, and it kind of works for them. I think that the Flyers need to do something like that. I mean, we've blown how many leads has it been this year? How many two-goal leads has it been? So, especially without Four, Couturier, I think. <laughs> four, yeah. I mean, it's insane. And, um, with, I mean, without Couturier, I don't think it should be a permanent thing when we're down, when we're up by a goal or two to just play completely defensive. But for the time being, without Couturier, like I said, I think you hit the nail on the head as far as, you know, they should p probably play way more defensive because they're trying to score and it's coming back in our zone. We can't get the puck out and we end up going into overtime and losing. So I think, you know, focus way more on defense when we have even a goal lead without Couturier. Just focus on that. You know what I mean? I think that's that's the key. I yeah, I completely agree. Um, I think, you, like, you hit it right on the head. It's until Couturier is back, then you're going to be able to protect the lead better while doing both. It just seems like with them out, you're having trouble multitasking or until you get at least – if you had Couturier out and had a more defensive defense, that probably would make it a little bit easier too where adding Gustafsson is not defensive whatsoever. Um, yeah. And Justin Braun has very good analytical numbers, as I said in my video yesterday. I don't have any issue with him when he's able to get to the play. Problem is he's not getting faster, he's getting slower. So you need to have a guy on his line that matches with him well, and the Flyers don't have that person. The only guy that would match with him well is if Friedman can be more consistent because he can actually move on his skates a bit. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And, um, I mean, also, like, you know, Phil Myers was injured. I didn't think he looked particularly good yesterday. He had a couple turnovers. I didn't think he looked, like, horrible, but I didn't think he looked like himself that much. Um, no, so I until, agree. Yeah, I mean, until we get Couturier back, until, you know, you know, Myers gets his feet under him, he starts feeling a little better. Um, and then, you know, maybe honestly picking up another defenseman. Because like you said, uh, you know, Gustafson had a couple good plays in the offensive zone. But in the defensive zone, he's not amazing. And just a liability, Braun, pretty much. He's, I mean, he's a liability. And, 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 and I would say that Justin Braun, he's a smart player. He knows where to be. But again, can he get to that? Can he get there? He knows where he should be. But can he get there before a guy like David Pasternak just goes right by him? Um, so, yeah, I mean, the defense need to, needs to start playing some defense and not focus on scoring scoring goals. Yeah, I mean, Anthony uh, DeMarco, who I have liked from, I think he works for the Painted Lines, uh, that covers for the Flyers. I went back and forth with him on Twitter today because he wants a top-line guy. Um, I don't think we're going to end up getting a top-line defender. It'll just be too much assets. But Victor Mete, I said, or Vince Dunn, uh, the double Vs, uh, one of the two guys you could get there. Dermott wouldn't make much sense to me for the Flyers either because he's more offensive. So you're just adding another guy that's more yes. offensive into a team that has too many offensive defensemen as it is. So um, I would just think Mete would be the best because he's probably the least expensive and um, would be a guy that actually is a career – he's either a plus 29 or a plus 25. Like I said yesterday, I can't remember exactly which one it is. But he's been very good defensively his entire career and chips in on offense. So he focuses on getting the pass out of the zone and being the guy that can stop the play and then her chip in here and there on offense where some of our guys like Gus focus more on offense and you need guys like him, I would say, to kind of fit in the hole. And uh, a lot of the rumored trades you see for him are the one that – was uh, reported by an account that ended up being false um, or not giving up the most amount of assets. So I think you could get him for not too much and still have a very good uh, team without giving up. Like you could probably, honestly, if you were willing to put somebody in for Raffle and actually give a younger guy that spot, potentially trade Raffle and just a later round pick for Victor Mete. Because Raffle is yeah. a good forward that's consistent on defense uh, for a team, and Montreal could use another guy like that. But uh, I don't think they'll do that because I think the Flyers love Michael Raffle. But that's just an example of I don't think he's going to take too much. Yeah, we, we have a lot of uh, assets. You know, I agree with that. And, um, and uh, touching on one of the things you said there was like, 
getting having a guy who can get the puck out right now that's been a huge issue obviously for the Flyers and one of the things I said in like my five keys to beating the Bruins was support passes you know yesterday in the first period I don't even want to look what our passing percentage was <laughs> because I mean I don't think I think it looked like all of our all of the Flyers were colorblind and they didn't know who was on their team and who wasn't uh it just seems like we kind of we've kind of forgotten about the little support passes up the boards just to move the puck past the blue line it doesn't need to be you know a rush you know two on two on one home run pass and go score no if you're getting pressure just get the puck out at all at all costs and if we can get a guy like that who can move the puck up the ice get off the ice that's perfect that's exactly what we need we don't need we don't we our offense has been pretty good we don't need a guy to go to take it end to end on defense and score we just need to get the puck out of our zone so yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't need that Provorov disgusting play you had last year happening all yeah. the time from your defensive zone. You just need a, a guy to actually get it out and get it up. Uh, that's all you really need. And I think hey, bringing a Mete Myers when he has his legs under him along with the Sandheim line is probably the best at both guys uh, doing that, where Ghost um, is obviously when he's at his best good at doing that and then Provy. So those two... The big issue with the Flyers, I think, is A.V. even hinted at it. He hasn't made a steady third pairing because he doesn't know who should be a steady third pairing. That's why he's been mixing guys in and out to see who takes the icing on the cake. That's why I think you need to get another top four defenseman, which Mete, in my opinion, is. I don't think you're going to get a top two, though, because that's just too many assets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, as for the Flyers um, going into tomorrow's game, uh, who do we? Who do you think is going to be the biggest key to their success? If you actually think, first of all, do you think they're actually going to be able to bounce back and win tomorrow's game after their disappointing loss? And if you do, who, who do you think is going to be the biggest three keys to success for uh, the Flyers to be able to do so? So yeah, I wouldn't go out and say that you know we're going to bounce back and win. I do think we're going to bounce back when we play the Bruins, and we've seen it this year. Two out of the three games go into overtime. They've been close, except for that six-one game, which seems to be fluky. I don't know, um, but uh, I mean, I honestly, like you were saying, you think that the you know our our bottom our bottom six were better than our top six yesterday. I think that's the first key. I think that our top guys who are you know, getting paid to go out there are going to have to show up tomorrow. I mean, they have, they have, they've been great all year. Our top six has been really good all year, I'd say. Um, but we are going to need those top six that really didn't show up yesterday as much to show up tomorrow. And I'm not talking about scoring goals and stuff, more of the little things, you know, the 50, 50 pucks along the boards, um, dumping it in and actually getting there, at least giving them a battle. And I mean, a lot of my frustration of yesterday comes from the first period. The first period obviously was abysmal for the Flyers. Um, but it's it's hard because there were a lot of good things that the Flyers did yesterday. I mean, even after the first period, you could say that the Flyers bounced back in a huge way. Um, I explained this game as like uh, you're on vacation, you're going, you're going to France. And um, the beginning of the vacation – you know, you're kind of jet lagged and that's the first period. You don't have your feet under you. You're trying to learn the language and stuff. Second period, you're starting to learn it a little more, things like that. Third period comes around, you know everything. And then you get pickpocketed and your vacation is just ruined. And that's what I felt. I felt like. It's <laughs> a good like analogy. Yeah, that's just the only analogy I can think. I felt like I was watching the game and I was sitting there like a, like a, like a tourist. And somebody just stole my wallet right out of my pocket at the end of, at the end of my trip. Um so yeah, I don't know what th I don't know what three keys I would say. It's just more of just like a full team effort for sixty minutes of play, just full on show show them what you got and you know put leave it all out there basically. Yeah, I completely agree with that. You have to. Uh, that's the one thing I haven't seen from the Flyers. I think even in most games they won. There hasn't been many games that you feel they left it all out on the ice yet. There's usually been a lull period in every game so mm -hmm. far where I'm waiting for a game like last year where we just have those games where we would just pound and pound and pound the team the whole 60 at times. I haven't seen that yet. And that's kind of what I'm waiting for, which I think is kind of what you were hinting at uh, as well. As a, for an update for people on a score, the Rangers took down the Capitals uh, tonight in an upset win uh, early on this season. Um, but, yeah, I completely agree with uh, you on that. I think it has to be a full effort, and they have to play a much better, concise overall game. Um, and that's what you're going to see 
um, from the Flyers. I think tomorrow, you, no matter if Moose is in, because Moose has played very good uh, this year, or Carter Hartson, who played a great game. He's the one I feel the worst for, like oh, Jamie yeah. tweeted uh, from yesterday, because he played a fantastic game and then couldn't get anything. It's like a pitcher. Like the good mm-hmm. analogy for that is like Cole Hamels. Uh, yeah. When Cole Hamels would pitch eight shutout innings, Mm-hmm. And then you're like, yeah, we lost one nothing, and you're just like, how in God's name did you? Yeah, he gets a um, loss. He gets yeah, a or loss when Cliff game. Lee pitched ten innings, and yeah. they still lost. <laughs> uh, like, like, like that's pretty much what that was. Like, it was mm-hmm. just like how, like, like that's almost like it's like when Kemper loses for Arizona and has like forty saves, you're just like that should not happen. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I think uh, the next question then to lead into that. That's why I brought that up. Is do you think they're going to go with Carter and back to backs with the day, since of the day off, or they're let Moose go against the Bruins uh, and um, actually have Moose go up against them? Uh, maybe Halak or Rask. We'll see what they do. They tend to platoon, so I would think it might be Halak, but we'll have to see. Yeah, I mean, I think Hart played well enough yesterday where you feel comfortable enough to play him again tomorrow or yeah tomorrow and um so I wouldn't be surprised if I saw Hart and like you said Elliot's been great this season you know like stellar he's been better than he like above average and um, and so I don't know maybe if they feel like you know we've lost three straight to the Bruins let's put Elliot in let's beat this let's beat these guys switch it up a little bit I could see that but like I said I also don't think Hart played I think Hart played pretty, pretty, da- pretty damn well to, you know, lose four three. Um, I feel like we should be more than comfortable having him in the net tomorrow night too. As far as, um, you know, there is a break in between. I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of expect to see Hart. I don't know. I think if you put Hart in and you say, you know, you've been getting scored on a lot, but it isn't your fault. We believe in you. Go out there and show us again. And you know, I think he can rally behind that. I think the team can rally behind that. So either or, I wouldn't be surprised, but I would, I don't know. I would say hard. I, I, would, I would put hard in. Yeah, I would too, because I think when you're trying to get that bounce back win, you want to put in your guy that's compared to Carey Price. And it's, and obviously Elliot's been very good, but he hasn't ever been compared to a Hall of Fame goaltender uh, in his <laughs> career. That's elite company when you come into the league and get immediately compared to one of the best of all time and definitely – first or second best of our generation i would say um so that because Brodeur is probably still first and then you would call carter hart the um set or not carter hart carrie price the i was like whoa best. whoa whoa <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> generation <laughs> hopefully carter hart gets there yeah oh, I, I, I would love to see um, that but yeah i think um he's gonna do well and that'll probably be a reason we're able to win tomorrow because you got to steal some saves against the bruins they're gonna get chances but I honestly think my biggest key to being able to win is don't take stupid penalties. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the thing that allows the Bruins to score. The Bruins are good on the power play and really have just been an average five on five team mm-hmm. after really being below average to start the season. Um, and then they got scoring on five on five. That's why if you let them play to their strengths, they're going to beat you. If you don't oh, yeah. put them on the power play, they're not going to beat you, in my opinion, nearly mm-hmm. as well. So I think my biggest key is just don't be stupid. And I mean, whoever said that wasn't a, I mean, Scott Lawton was eight feet away from the, like like that. Yeah, that was was clearly an interference uh, penalty. Like Jason Martinez said, I'm not going to stand for people blaming the rest for that game because that was clearly a self-inflicted loss. I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. And uh, like, I was going to say also, um, as far as uh, as far as penalties go, Lawton's been a guy who who has taken penalties like that. Like last season, he wasn't. It wouldn't be uncommon for him to take a penalty like that. So that's something. Lawton's still pretty young, and he's gotta. He's just gotta learn from that. I mean, he cost us that game. He cost us at two points. There was a lot of other things that led to us even going into overtime, and not just taking the two points right away. But I mean, they scored on four on three, and it was pretty easy for them honestly and I was also going to say the Bruins the Bruins are a team where uh it's not rare in the NHL but it's a great thing to have they're the type of team that they'll bring the game to you and you know if if you don't stop them and show them no we're here too they can run away with a game so easily and honestly when they scored that first goal yesterday I was like here we go you let the Bruins do that and you're done so going along with that if you if you put them on the power play get off the ice get off the ice you're gonna win you know what I mean like you're not helping yourself out at all and 
so yeah, I mean, I think tomorrow we got to be disciplined. We got to, and you know, we got to bring our game to them. They're going to bring every night. They're going to bring their game to us. We got to bring our game to them, bang them around, hit them. You know what I mean? Do whatever you got to play some flyers hockey. We've been exactly. saying all along, you know, you want to see some grit from this team. And I think tomorrow is a game where we should be mad. We should be very mad going into that game. Yeah, and I think a guy you'll probably see play very well again, because I honestly thought he was one of our best skaters yesterday, is a game that you're trying to get vengeance, you're pissed off, and usually Nat comes out and plays his best. Yeah. Uh, Abe Kubel, and he played his best last game, honestly. And the, uh, But they just weren't able to win that game, so it's not talked about as much. But mm -hmm. I think uh, he'll play a very good game. But I think uh, as we're uh, wrapping up uh, our preview show here, a big question we have to ask is we mentioned the third pair earlier. Justin Braun's likely to be the guy that's just going to stay on it. If you were AV in this scenario, after seeing how Gustafson made defensive mistakes in last night's game, are you putting him back with Justin Braun for tomorrow, or are you going with the other options are probably Nate Prosser or Robert Hag, unless if you call back and bring Friedman, uh, or, or Mark Friedman. No, Mark Friedman is still up. I thought they put him on the taxi squad. So, yeah, Mark Friedman, uh, Hag, or, or – um, Prosser, I guess, would be the one they would actually have to call back up. Yeah, I mean, going back to what I said about starting Hart tomorrow, just because, you know, he might be he might be mad. Gustafson took a lot of heat, you know, from that that night. And I'm sure like the fans were mad. I mean, I was mad. He didn't play very yeah. well. Um, you you obviously seem, you know, you're like he's it was bad. It was a bad performance by by Gustafson. And um, same thing with Hart, where Hart goes out there, he he plays really well and he he doesn't win he's going to come out mad hopefully you know as mad as we get as fans I can't imagine you know Elaine Vigneault going into the locker room and looking at the tape and everything and being like Gus where are you on this play you know what I mean yeah so I I stick with the same line I don't know I mean you can put another guy in to try to mix it up but we know the Bruins well and I'd stay with the same line I'd stay with the same pairings on D and say look you, you were terrible last game Get out there, show me what you can do, or I will switch the lines up. I think that's what I think that would light a fire and get the team to play well. Get get Gustafson to play well with Braun, and you know, yeah. I mean, I think that'd be enough to get them to play a little better. Uh, and the game also wasn't wasn't out of hand either. Like if we lost six one yesterday to the Bruins, I would say mix it up, mix it up. You know, we, yeah. we lost. We had a three one lead. We blew it. We lost in overtime. We didn't get you know blown out of the water. But, you know, I, I would stick with it and just tell the guys, you know, you, you need to do better or else I am going to mix it up. Yeah, um, I actually was thinking the other way until you phrased it that way, um, where um, you, that's a good way to actually do it. Challenge him and say, look, you stunk last game. You need yeah. to step it up this game. Uh, if you don't, you're sitting next game. Mm -hmm. And that could be a real motivating thing. So how about that? Your first podcast debut, you convinced me to go another way on the tape. There you go. All right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I would say then keep them in, uh, see what happens. If that's a bad game, then I would say you have to put in a – you can't put Prosser with Braun. So you have to put in a Hag or you have to put in a uh, Friedman at that mm -hmm. point. Prosser with Braun is exactly what Peerless said in the show. That's just two guys stealing the puck off of someone's stick and then mm -hmm. sitting there with it and playing baseball catches in the defensive zone. As yeah. they pass it back and forth, and you're just like, why are they not passing the puck up? What the don't mm -hmm. they not supposed to pass the puck up into the offensive zone? Like that's pretty much what that would end up being. They would probably play good defensively. You would just be like, pass the puck up. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only issue that would be with that line. Um, but now as we're entering our 20 minute mark here, we thank you all for joining, and I'll turn it over to Mike uh, to say any closing points. If you have any final points that you want to share with everybody. Uh, no, I'm happy to be on board. I appreciate uh, your time and thanks for listening. Um, and I think the Flyers are going to be just fine. I think we're a good team. We're talented and that will prevail. We'll put it together and, uh, you know, hang on. We're, we're, we're going places this year. So. Yep, I completely agree with that. And uh, everybody on Pure Low Wisdom's channel, uh, you can check me out tomorrow. Mike sometimes pops in the live chat. Hopefully we can get him on sometime when he has free time as well. Um, but you can check that out tomorrow. We thank you all for joining us for the Flyers and Bruins preview for tomorrow's game. Let's bring that anytime, anywhere to the Bruins and be able to beat them tomorrow. For Mike, thanks for joining. I am Joe. Sure. Have a great night, everybody. Peace out and enjoy the game tomorrow.